Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Good afternoon, and welcome to St. Andrew's Parish for today's Mass, the vigil for the 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please stand. Welcome now to Mass for Sunday. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. Today in the gospel, it's a little bit rather frightening because what it's saying to us that after death, you cannot change your life. But the good news is, the good news is that while you're still alive, you can change. Isn't that great? So we ask the Lord now to give us the grace today to be able to change. We all know things in our lives that we could be better at doing. So let's ask the Lord before we begin to remove all the fears, all the worries and the distractions from our minds. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to his people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you'll honor the Holy One. You will honor the Lord. You will honor the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who manifested your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, Bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us, and make those hasting to attain your promises hears to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated now for the readings. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, woe to the complacent in Zion, lying upon beds of ivory, stretched comfortably on their couches. They eat lambs taken from the flock and calves from the stall, improvising to the music of the harp. Like David, they devise their own accompaniment. They drink wine from bowls and anoint themselves with the best oils. Yet they are not made ill by the collapse of Joseph. Therefore, now they shall be the first to go into exile, and their wanton revelry shall be done away with. The word of the Lord. Love. 
way of the wicked he thrives. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, through all generations, reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. But you, man of God, pursue righteousness, devotion, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Compete well for the faith. Lay hold of eternal life to which you were called when you made the noble confession in the presence of many witnesses. I charge you before God who gives life to all things, and before Christ Jesus, who gave testimony unto Pontius Pilate for the noble confession to keep the commandment without stain or reproach until the appearance of our Lord Jesus Christ, that the blessed and only ruler will make manifest at the proper time, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has immorality who dwells in unapproachable light and whom no human being has seen or can see. To him be honor and eternal power. Amen. The word of the Lord. Be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to the Pharisees, There was a rich man who dressed in purple garments and fine linen, and dined scrumptiously each day. And lying at his door was a poor man named Lazarus covered with sores. He would gladly have eaten his fill of the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. The dogs even used to come and lick his sores. When the poor man died, he was carried away by angels to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried, and from the netherworld, where he was in torment, he raised his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he cried out, Father Abraham, have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am suffering torment in these flames. Abraham replied, My child, remember that you received what was good during your lifetime, while Lazarus likewise received what was bad. But now he is comforted here, whereas you are tormented. Moreover, between us and you, a great chasm is established to prevent anyone from crossing who might wish to go 
from our side to yours or from your side to ours. He said, then I beg you, Father, send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that they may, that he may warn them, lest they too come to this place of torment. But Abraham replied, they have Moses and the prophets, let them listen to them. He said, oh no, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. Then Abraham said, if they will not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded if someone should rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Good afternoon again. There's a story about a man who found it very difficult to hear. So he was able to purchase the latest sophistication in hearing aids. And he had them for about three weeks and he went back to get a checkup. And the woman said to him at the counter, how do you like the new hearing aids? He says, I can hear perfectly clear with them. I can hear everything. And she said, uh, I'm sure your family is very happy. He says, oh, my family, well, I didn't tell them yet. And I have changed my will three times since. We can change our minds while we're still alive. In this gospel today, it's really the rich versus the poor. A rich man dressed in purple garments and fine linen and dined well each day. It says lying at his door was a poor man, gladly would have eaten the scraps that fell from the table. Lazarus was poor, he died, he was carried by angels to heaven. The rich man also died where we're told he was in torment and in some sort of hell. The late Mother Theresa poured out her life in loving service to the poorest of the poor. She said, the heart of this service is caring for Jesus, who is present in the poor under a distressing disguise. The poor man named Lazarus, who is in dire need. The rich man is in a position to help Lazarus in his need. The needs of the poor man are small. He would gladly have eaten the scraps it would take very little for the rich man to help him. It's not that he kicked Lazarus each time he passed him, and it's not that he yelled obscenities at him whenever he saw him. The sin for which the rich man now suffers is that he paid no attention to Lazarus. The sin of omission doing something he should have done, not lifting a finger, he could have helped with very little effort in his part. Would he choose to close his eyes, his heart, and ignore him? The following story bears this in mind. One afternoon, a rich man was riding in the back of his limousine, when he noticed a man was eating grass by the side of the road. He ordered his driver to stop. He got out to investigate. Why are you eating grass? He asked the man. Oh, come along with me then, said the rich man, 
But sir, I have a wife with two children. Bring them as well, said the rich man. The poor man got into the car and expressed his gratitude. Sir, you are too kind. Thank you for taking us with you. The rich man replied, no problem, my friend. The grass at my place is about three feet tall and I could use your help. Many years ago, in the parish that I was at, we had a food pantry. And on a Thursday, some of them would come in for Bible study. I read this gospel that I just read and asked some of them who came in to the room, are you in this? And they said, we are the poor. The poor trying to get the scraps, they said. And then somebody said, but you always help even if you are poor. And then they said, the rich are scared of us, but never went through hunger. They were never in a position of hunger. And then somebody said, the rich do not even make their own bed, but in a sense they do. They can determine where they want to be in the next life. As the saying goes, the rich need the poor to get into heaven. The end of the gospel today is so final. Death is very final. Neither will they be persuaded if someone should rise from the dead. You see, the great gift is that we're all alive here this afternoon. We can't change after that. It's too late, like the rich man. You will meet Lazarus. Unfortunately, you will meet Lazarus again and again. Recently, I watched a woman look after Lazarus. It appeared quite normal to her. She did not know his name, but it was Lazarus because she said he has absolutely no food. Jesus said, you will always have the poor. Lazarus is all around us. I hope we recognize him. Amen. Let us now humbly profess our faith in one God. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God and true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the power of the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. On this Saturday afternoon now, we humbly raise our hearts, our minds to our Heavenly Father as we bring the needs before him. 
for church leaders. May the Lord bless them in their humble service of love for God's people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our, Lord, hear our prayer. For government officials, may the Holy Spirit be their guide in seeking justice and truth in all of their actions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear Lord, our, our prayer. prayer. For those who suffer from lack of adequate housing, food, or educational opportunities, may the Lord bless them with the help and support they need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For all of us gathered here, may the Lord renew and deepen our faith and lead us in greater service to one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all the faithful departed, particularly those who have no one else to pray for them. May they be welcomed into the heavenly Jerusalem. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for today's mass intention, Maria Emmanuel Narciso, Pete Rose, Regina Frears, and Donna. We just pause for a moment now in the silence of your own hearts, bringing those prayers that are dear to you before Almighty God. Heavenly Father, you know the needs in the hearts of each one present here this afternoon. Also, those who are listening and watching on the airwaves, we bring all our prayers before you. Through the intercession of Saint Joseph and the Blessed Mother, as we say the Hail Mary together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good the good of all this holy church. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of the blessing may be laid upon before us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty, eternal God, for we know it belongs to your boundless glory 
that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity, and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord, through him the hosts of angels, adore your majesty, and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in the one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. come to the most sacred part of the Mass, the Eucharistic prayer. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Edgar, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Jesus, the risen Lord, the healer, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
Gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O virgins of virgins, our mother. To you do we come, before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in your mercy, Hear and answer them. Amen. O Mary, conceive without sin. Pray for us who have recourse. May the heart of Jesus in the most blessed sacrament be praised, adored, and loved with grateful affection at every moment in all the tabernacles of the world, even to the end of time. Amen. Saint Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle, be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan 
and all the evil spirits who prowl around the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. First Saturday, October 1st, the Feast of St. Therese, there will be a dedication of the renovated statue after the 9 a.m. Mass. The men of St. Joseph will also be meeting following the Mass and dedication. Saturday, October 1st is Catholic Youth Day. To be held at Cathedral Camp in East Freetown, there is a flyer available at all the entrances with registration information. Thursday, October 13th, there will be a candlelight procession gathering at the Eagles Hall at 5.15 p.m., processing to the church for a healing mass at 6.30 p.m. Sunday, October 16th, Father Murphy will be meeting with all faith formation, parents, and guardians in the parish hall at 10 a.m. Tomorrow, Sunday the 25th, Faith Formation Grades 3 and 4 will meet in the church and Grade 10, Confirmation 2, will meet in the parish hall. Please remember to share the bulletin with your family and friends about the upcoming events going on in our parish. Let us pray. May the heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended now. Go in peace and love to serve the Lord. Thank you all for your presence. May the week be one of peace and especially health. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.